everybody. Kevin Broden coming at you from Loan Officer Impact. And we have a wonderfully cool guest on today, a guy that I get to call my friend way more so than my coworker. But we have an incredible guy joining us from the great state of California. More uh, importantly, I think he lives in San Diego, one of the nicest cities I've ever been to. And uh, this guy's been nothing but a partner for us. And I met him, well, I'll tell the story how I met him after I introduce him, but without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my dear friend, Mr. John McDade. John, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing, Kevin? I'm great, buddy. Thanks so much for joining us here on Loan Officer Impact. Our mission here at Loan Officer Impact is to help impact the lives positively of every loan officer that chooses to tune in nationwide, regardless of what company they work at, and hopefully, impact them a way that they have a more stress-free life, a more fun-filled life, and and that they thrive in this market, not simply survive. So um, thanks for joining us today. It's my honor. Well, so those who are tuning in to the audience, this is um, arguably the most influential person in the United States in the history of VA lending. Um, John, I believe, has closed more VA loans than any person, any individual person ever. He's participated in north of 35,000 VA home loan closings. Um, he is not only unbelievably knowledgeable, but he's more kind than he is knowledgeable, which is why I love him. He served our country um, honorably and for that, I will obviously be grateful forever. And so are probably everyone that's tuning into our show today. Um, so, John, if you could, do you mind sharing just quickly how you started off in the VA lending business? Um, sure. Uh, I am a, a Vietnam vet. I'm an Air Force veteran. And um, we weren't treated very kindly when we got back. And um when we got back and, and the protesters got us at the airport, uh, I never wanted anybody to serve, to feel the way I felt that day. Uh, so I made up my life's mission that I wanted to find something where I could work with and help veterans. Well, I, I moved from Pennsylvania out to California and I was uh, selling office supplies and I opened up an account for a mortgage company. And he told me about the VA loan. And I mean, I had one, but I, I, I had the ability to have one, but I didn't know what it was. So that's, that's when the light turned on. So for about 90 days, I went over to his office at nights and worked with him on the weekends, just going around and calling on realtors before I got into the business. And uh, I, uh, in, when I moved to San Diego, I hooked up with a, uh, Navy captain, retired Navy captain named Bill Hamill that taught me how to do VA loans. Uh, Bill's claim to fame is he was Mark Hamill's father. Oh, wow. The guy that played Skywalker taught yeah. me how to do, his dad taught me how to do VA loans. And, and, I, and I've just developed a passion for it uh, since. And uh, I got to know the people that, that run the VA. Um, we've participated in several committees with uh, with the heads of the VA and uh, it, it's the best loan on the planet, bar none. So I happen to know just from some of the data I see, John, that VA loans perform better than I think every other kind of mortgage. Is that true? For 28 consecutive years, it's been either number one or number two in lowest foreclosure rates. Yes. Excellent, excellent. So and that's competing with the 20% down conventionals. Yeah, exactly. That's against every other loan product in the country. Number one or number exactly. two every year for 28 straight years. So, John, one thing that you've taught me that I'm constantly shocked by, not in a good way, is how few actually utilize the benefit that they have in getting VA financing on a home loan. Um, is that A, still true? And B, why do you think that is when it, the, the benefit of the loan is very significant to the borrower? Well, it's getting better, um, but it is still true. Only uh, well under 15% of the eligible vets have used it. And quite frankly, Kevin, this is my 49th year. Uh, I start on February 15th of next year. I'll start my 50th year in the business. And um, our industry is sold against the VA program since I've been in it. Uh, right. Most of the people in our industry do not understand the program. 
do not understand what a great program it is, what an easy program it is, and, and the benefits of it. And they have really poisoned the real estate community against this program. So we we kind of have an uphill battle, but you know what? I I think we're winning. I think we are too. And I got the great pleasure to be with you in Tyler, Texas, of all places, about fun. a month ago. And uh I listened intently to you describing to a group of about 50 realtors the benefit of VA financing for their seller, for their borrowers, for everyone involved, including themselves. And it was so refreshing to hear because you could see from the faces in the crowd, they didn't know any of the stuff that you were saying was accurate and true. And, And they had been poisoned by whoever taught it to them. It's kind of one of those things where they only know what they know, right? And so they hear that, oh, the appraisals are terrible. They hear that the home inspection is terrible. None of that's true, but they hear that. And so obviously it's not really abnormal for them to think it, right? Correct. Well, we've done some research and we found that conventionally in FHA, about 83% of the appraisals come in at value. VA, about 86% of the appraisals come in at value. And because VA has the Tidewater Initiative and the ability to uh, request a reconsideration of value, the end number is about 94% of the VA appraisals are coming in at value. It's an amazing so stat. That's a myth. That's an a myth. amazing stat. And, and if you think about it, and again, you've taught me this, but isn't it the true mission of the Veterans Administration that every single person who honorably served our country utilizes this benefit if they choose to buy a home? That is absolutely correct. Uh, Other agencies, their goal is to protect the fund of the agencies, uh, to protect their portfolio. VA's whole goal is to support the veteran to get into housing if he can afford it. You don't want to put that veteran in harm's way either. If you can't afford it, you know, you've got to be straightforward and honest with them and say, hey, look, you need to work on this. You need to work on that. But at this point, you're just not qualified for it. And that's a hard thing to do. But responsible lending is at the forefront of obviously what we do every day. And, and it's imperatively important because just because they can get in a home for zero down does not mean they should get in a home for zero down. You know, and they're qualified for it because they're eligible doesn't make them qualified. That's 100 percent accurate. Um If you could, could you briefly hit on some of the benefits that maybe our audience doesn't know fully? You know, I know that like we have a lot of loan officers that watch this show, but could you share just some of the benefits that maybe they forget about or don't get presented to them? Well, uh, first of all, it's a zero down program if you have full entitlement. Right. If you have full entitlement, there is no maximum loan limit. Uh, You can get a million dollars zero down home if you qualify for it. Right. Uh, You can have more than one active VA loan at a time. And that's something I guarantee not everyone knows, right? I guarantee you not everybody knows. How many times have we taken loans from other companies because they said you're not eligible, you already have a VA? Many times. Um, It has built-in protection against the higher rates with the EARL. As rates begin to drop, we can refinance them into the lower rate with no appraisal, no income verification, no asset verification. It's just they made their payments on time and we can recapture uh, the closing costs within 36 months with the payment savings. It's automatic. And I, I hope everyone gonna... just heard that. And, and it's going to become more and more important the longer these rates stay at the current value that they're at and the quick when the, then when they ultimately come back down. This is going to open the floodgates for many people to get an, another additional benefit without much, if any, red tape, correct? No red tape, basically. Yep. And, uh, and we have an election year coming up. Correct. So you can, almost, you can almost guarantee rates are going to begin to drop. You would think. You would think. Yeah, well, yeah, these days. You sometimes never know, thinking, right? Well, sometimes thinking is what's done the least. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that's true. True statement. Have you, uh, John, in your 50, almost 50 years, hey, congratulations. What an incredible milestone. How many of us listening in can say we've served this industry for 50 years? Not very many of us. And Um, I love it more every day. I know you do. And I think that your exuberance and your 
coolness factor just keep going up every year. And, and I think that's imperative to how you've made it this long in the industry and still are as passionate today as you were before, probably more so. What um, Have you seen changes over the years that um, the VA has gone through that make it easier for the oh, borrower? Or give me oh, a little absolutely. bit of background on that. Totally. Um, I got in it before there was automatic underwriting where you had to mail everything into the VA right. and wait for approvals. You had to, to get a certificate of eligibility. It took 30 to 60 days. Uh, you know, back in the old days, yeah, it was tough. And, and maybe that's why some of the old time realtors, but they, they made serious changes. There was a gentleman named Keith Pedigo who for 22 years ran the VA as the executive director and the, the changes he made, VA automatic authority came in under Keith. Um, the negotiated interest rate, if you remember way, way back, VA, they decided what the rate was going to be and that's the only rate you could charge. Right. And Keith changed that. Uh, Keith brought in uh, National Guard and reservists to be eligible for a VA loan the electronic certificate of eligibility, the electronic loan guarantee certificate, right. all under this gentleman. And uh, he has to be, happens to be a very good friend of mine and uh, uh, just an amazing, amazing individual, what he did to this program. And he basically took it out of the hands of the VA, clerks they hired at the VA and put it in the hands of the professionals, the lenders. Here, you guys manage this program because uh, one thing I hear all the time from realtors is my lender says steer clear of the VA. The VA is impossible to work with. You don't work with the VA. You work with the lender. Right. VA is not involved. They don't even know there's a loan until the loan guarantee certificate is issued. That's and right. The lender even issues a loan guarantee certificate. So you don't deal with VA. You deal with that lender. And um so, and that's a common fallacy that VA is impossible to work with. You don't work with VA. You work with that lender. So why do we hear though, John, out in the street uh, many times that, you know, some lenders are great VA lenders and some are not great. Like why would someone not be great at that? Is it just, they don't have a appetite for the product or they don't understand the guidelines as well. Talk to us a little bit about that. If you could. All, all of the above. Um, Change now, and this would represent a change for some of these lenders. Change doesn't come easy to some people, and they don't get to know uh, the guidelines. They get into the guidelines and they see one thing they don't understand and they quit. Um, they don't, you know, some of the old timers, they, they remember the VA of old, they don't want to get involved. It, Correct. It's just totally different. And, um, uh, you know, when you're successful, in one direction and another line of success opens up, you hesitate to move to it because I'm doing so well here. Right. So um, I, 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 that's the only explanation I have because you know what? It, it's almost like they're serving you uh, a, a platter of here's the best loan on the planet, take it and and people are ignoring it. And one thing about us is we have taken it and we've run with it. Um, uh, we have we are very very good at doing the right. aliens. I wish there were a way for the general consumer, the veteran, to know that because I don't know of the best way to get that word out. But if you think about it, how many loans? And I I know that it's it's literally countless. Have we gotten closed that were started at another mortgage company because they simply are deficient you know. at this product? It's a lot. Exactly. And, and that's such a disservice to the veteran because he or she doesn't know that that other company's deficient. They just, uh, and how would they know, right? They just say, oh, it's a mortgage company. Yeah, exactly. And I have, uh, I have seen mortgage companies pull the bait and switch. They'll take in a VA say, oh no, you won't qualify for this. Well, let's put you in an FHA. Right. Well, my personal opinion is if you have somebody that's qualified for a VA and you put them into an FHA, you should lose your license. I because, agree with you hundred percent. Know, and uh, I know that that happens and it's unfortunate. Yes, it is. Yeah. What about this assumable reality? You know, there's um, oh, more yeah. now, could you touch on the facts about that? Cause I'm not, again, I'm not sure our whole audience knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. All VA loans are assumable. Uh, you have to put a credit package through the servicer. Um, 
You do not have to be a veteran to assume a VA loan. And it does not have to be owner occupied primary residence. It can be for investment. It can be a second home. It can be anything you want. Uh, and if a veteran assumes it, we can do what's called a substitution of entitlement. So the seller gets all their eligibility back and the new veteran assumes that entitlement. So, so hang on, let me make sure I'm clear on this. If there's a veteran in any state USA that got his or her mortgage in November of 2020 and got a 2.625 interest rate. Right. And they've been paying on that loan for three years and now they want to or have to sell their home. The new borrower, if qualified, regardless of whether they were a veteran or not, has the option to assume that 2.625 existing mortgage? Absolutely correct. They just have to pay the difference between the sales price and the loan balance on, on the on the loan. What an incredible opportunity. Do you think that that is like strategically marketed in our country at all or not? It's being marketed more so now. There are a lot more assumptions than there were a year ago, of course, with the rates. Yeah, with the rates. But, um, yeah, in... Uh, Quite frankly, a lot of the servicers, because we it had been so long since we'd seen the assumption, didn't know how to do them. Right. We had one with one of the largest servicers in the country. Uh, the seller had enough partial entitlement to use his VA to get a 100% loan on a new one. And he sold his house to uh, on the assumption to a non-vet. Well, they didn't know how to do it. This large servicer said, no, only your family can assume it. Well, anybody could. Right. I happened to know one of the executives in that company. I called him and he got on it and uh, took care of the situation for us. They but, made it right. Oh, yeah, they did it right. And uh, and actually, Christine uh, closed the loan for the seller. They got a new VA loan and, and their home closed. But if we didn't get involved, it probably wouldn't have closed. Correct. Correct. But what an awesome opportunity if you do have a buyer right now. Think of what the payment differential in today's rate environment is versus, let's say, 2.625. I mean, we're not talking about chump change here. We're talking about many, many, many thousands of dollars a year differential in that payment, oh, correct? You're talking five, $600 a month, depending on what your loan amount is. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a big, big, big deal. Yeah, it's a big, big deal. Um, yeah, it, go ahead. I'm it, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's it's an incredible benefit. And uh, that and the FHA program are the only two fixed rate assumable loans. But yep. with FHA, you're also assuming two insurance premiums. Correct. And uh, you don't have that with VA. Uh, and on now, FHA also has a streamlined refi where VA has the EARL. Right. Differences with VA, you can finance all the costs on your Earl. You can't finance your costs on a streamline. You have to come in with cash. With VA, you don't have to come in with a dime. And so, so let me ask this. Obviously, those are some great benefits. I hope everyone tuning in realizes what those benefits are. Um, when you look at getting the word out, you know, one of the things you're passionate about and I've become passionate more so because of you about is trying to preach from the pulpit, if we can, how great of an opportunity this is. And we've had some moderate success for a small company, right? And Absolutely. more than moderate. Yeah, I, I'm trying to be humble here, John. So uh, more than <laughs> not moderate. Not me. I love this place. I, <laughs> I want to shout it from the rooftops to everyone. Well, and But here's my point. What could the regular loan officer do to help promote this where it's a benefit to them, where they get more VA at-bats? Is there anything concrete the loan officer could be doing in their marketing or their daily walks around town to, to increase the likelihood that they will attract more VA business? Absolutely. Um, in, in my opinion, in this marketplace, we're back to the future. Uh, just means like when I first started, I had to make 20 calls a day, not a week, not a month, a day on real estate offices. Yeah, We need to go back in and see our real estate partners and we need to advise them of this. And I'll tell you what really helps, Kevin, is what we did in Tyler, Texas. You have 40, 50 realtors in one room. Yeah. You have a captive audience. 
And I'm telling you, those people talked and I'll bet you they've reached 500 realtors with everybody that was in that room since we've been there. I agree. And uh, that's really important to go and talk to, you know, get get a group like I'm going to uh, Kalamazoo on the uh, 3rd of uh, of next month. OK. And, uh, you know, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm doing one in Ocala on uh, Thursday. You're also going to be in Newport, Kentucky. In January. Yes, I will be with you. Uh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to that because uh, I watched you in action and you talk about uh, I was in total awe of, of the message you gave to them, how you put it out there. And it was so accurate and so true. And um, the response, it, it was fantastic. It was an education for me. Well, and I think, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, but I think John's message is crystal clear. We cannot sit behind our desks, people, and hope like heck a veteran calls us. We cannot do that. And what John is referencing is in the last few months, we've gotten together with small groups of between 25 and 75 realtors at one time, invited them to a lunch, maybe had a vendor partner or a title company or an insurance agent help contribute to the cost of the lunch and what have you. And We've put on a couple really fun summits, we call them, um, where realtors are learning something that they want to learn. And we've brought three different pieces of value that they've all walked out of there. I've interviewed about 50 of the realtors that I've met with in the last month. And every single one of them said we didn't waste one minute of their time. So if you're sitting there as a loan officer in any state USA, put something together, have a belly to belly, face to face meeting and get in front of the people and share with them truthful facts of how they can win and how you can win, but most importantly, how the consumer can win. And if that's in the VA realm, do it in VA. If it's in another walk of life, do that too. You can do multiple ones at one time. Heck, we had a multi-message approach, didn't we not, John, at that we did. in Texas? Um, yeah. We talked about reverse mortgages. We talked about the importance of being clear, focused, and executing within your real estate business. We talked about VA lending and how that can add to your bottom line. And, and non-QM. Yeah, we talked about non-QM loans there, and we did. Uh, it was a four-headed monster in essence. That, but every realtor said they walked out with tremendous value. And if you're looking to increase your number of referral partners, a great way to do it is to get belly belly face to face and bring them value. And and uh, hopefully you can take some of the things you learned about VA lending today and apply that to your business. Um, if you'd like to talk about this topic, go to growingwithkevin.com. That's growingwithkevin.com. My schedule is on there. You can grab a 15 minute block anytime you want to and I will help you in any way, shape or form I can to help you create a marketing opportunity to get in front of more people, to help deliver the message, talk about uh, presentation mastery, any of the above. If you are interested in this kind of thing in, as a way to grow your business, we would like to help you. John has helped so many people that don't work at our company, it's incredible. He is a giver only. He's an others first mindset guy. And that's why he's lasted 50 years in this industry and why his success ratio has been off the off the charts. And so um, to the audience here at Loan Officer Impact, thank you for tuning in. John, um, you're a wealth of knowledge. You're the smartest guy I've ever met in the mortgage industry um, as it pertains to VA financing. I, I've never talked to anyone that's remotely close in your in your wheelhouse. And it's been a, an education for me, um, the way you do it with compassion and passion, the way that you truly roll up your sleeves and get into the deal when you need to it is second to none. Um, you're just committed and, and I love committed people. So I hope everyone got some great takeaways and ahas from John today. Uh, I do every time I talk to the guy, and again, go to growingwithkevin.com if I can be of any service to you in any way, shape, or form. So, John, they're going to yell at me if we don't wrap it up soon because of our time okay. constraint. Um, Sounds good. But thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope everything's great. I hope your wife's doing great, and uh, I miss you, and yes, I look forward Kevin, to thank you. seeing you soon. Well, I'll tell you what. One of the reasons I have the passion are the people that I work with here at SNP. Uh, best people on the planet. Uh, never in my 49 years in this business have I been happier and more satisfied to work at a place uh, with the people I work with. It's just fantastic. 
Well, it takes a village, my friend, and it takes a village of others first committed people. And and hopefully that's what we try to bring every day. That's what we're doing this podcast for. It's others first committed people trying to help other folks have a great life. You betcha. All right. Well, thanks, thanks man. Again, Appreciate Kate. you. And uh, for all of you out Me there, too. please tune in next week and we'll keep trying to bring you value every single week. Have a great day. Be sure to visit successunlimited.us for free loan officer tools, tips, and video resources. To schedule time with Kevin, visit growingwithkevin.com.